Hi. Um, okay, so I want to address something before we get started. Yes, I technically used AI in this, but I don't consider this AI content, so like, don't get bent out of shape. I'm not coming back to AI. This is actually just a project that I've wanted to do for a long time, so I figured I'd document it because it'll probably help someone out there. Okay, so with all that out of the way, this project is meant to be an objective assessment for burnout. Okay, so what I need to address is that burnout is not medically recognized. If you talk to a doctor and say, I'm burned out, they'll say like, well, you know, have you tried meditation? And that's about it. Like most American doctors will just look at you like you have two heads if you talk about something like adrenal fatigue or burnout or whatever. Um, they don't really know anything about it and it's not recognized. Uh, the official medical establishment basically says it's better explained by things like anxiety and depression, which is complete BS. Anyways, with that disclaimer out of the way, um, I'm coming out of burnout, and what I wanted to do, what I've wanted for a while, is a way of measuring it. Now, I've got a Garmin here, which is actually pretty good for me like objectively measuring how much energy you have. So, for instance, um, over the last week, my average daily steps are 11,800. So, objectively speaking... I've got pretty good physical energy. I also can track my sleep score, so I objectively know how my sleep is doing. However, just how physically active you are and just how much sleep you're getting and the quality of your sleep, while those are really, really good, like if you do nothing else except just you know get a, a, a wearable, that can be a pretty good objective measurement. However, what I wanted to create was a more comprehensive instrument that can allow anyone to assess how burned out they are and break it down based on categories. So what I ultimately created was this survey here, and it's very long, it's 240 questions. I'll probably try and make a shorter one, um, but basically what it does is it will, uh, it asks you a variety of questions, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the whole process. But I just wanted to show you up front, and I'm not gonna show you my scores because it's you know private, um, but uh, it, ge it accurately generates scores, and there's a, Probably a couple bugs in here still, uh, but I'll show you how I went through it and also the the Git repo where it's up, uh, where it, where you can take a look at it. And you can download this file. So this is just an HTML file. It's a completely standalone file, which will um, you can take the assessment yourself. Um, I took it myself just now just to make sure that it works, and I generally agree with where I'm at. I think my burnout score is like 73, so the higher is the better. So like if you're 100% zero signs of burnout in your life anywhere, you'll be at 100, and if you're severely burned out, um, you'll probably be closer to like 40 or 50. Like, basically, if you're at zero, you're dead. Um, and if you're at, at 100, you're Brian Johnson. Um, I Honestly, like, let's see if we can get Brian Johnson to take this or see what he thinks about it, because I would not be surprised if he's like 90 to 95 or more. Um, but anyway, so I'm at 73, so I'm like, you know, that's, that's still a D, you know, I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not in the F range, but it's better than probably where I was. All right. Anyways, so let me show you. Uh, well, I guess first we'll do the the repo just so you can take a look at it. Um, so burnout recovery index. Now, what I want to say is this is based on a lot of stuff. So I work with academics and researchers when we talk about survey methodology. Um, I've dated a researcher, methods researcher before. Um, and plus I have read a crap ton on burnout. So all of that has gone into this, uh, this instrument. And so I've got it all documented up here. Like what is the purpose? Um, this project aims to create a reliable self-assessment inventory to measure burnout without medical interventions. The burnout recovery index provides individuals with, it, with an objective tool to assess their current level of burnout and track changes over time. Again, the purpose is to give you specific numbers. Um, so we use Likert scale, we use bipolar questions, split half consistency to reduce re uh, bias. And then we have 12 categories of, of uh, cl basically 12 clusters of symptoms. So the categories that we cover are sleep, work, physical health, mental health, energy and fatigue, uh, social relationships, cognitive function, motivation and purpose, emotional regulation, self-care and leisure, stress management, and work-life balance. Now, these might sound repetitive, but once you look at the questions, you'll realize that they actually look at it from slightly different uh, perspectives. Um, so the again, the idea here is to break down how burned out you are from a number of perspectives. I don't have any data as to like what qualifies as burnout on this scale, so I'm hoping that like if there's any burnout researchers out there, whether you're a medical researcher or a psychological researcher or whatever, 
Um, if you want to like borrow this, it's under the MIT license. You're welcome to to borrow this and reach out to me and talk to me if you want to um, to make this a little bit more formalized. I think that it would be really great to get some real data on this. Um, first, we'll probably need to make sure that it's actually working, uh, have an expert or experts ideally go over the questions, provide some feedback. Um, but yeah, because if we get if we get real data, then we can say, ah, yes, typically speaking, if you have a score of 65 or less, you're burned out. Or if you're 50, then you probably need to be hospitalized. You know, something like that. Um, again, none of this is medical advice. This is not meant to replace diagnostics. I want to be really clear about this. This is strictly meant to be an at-home like uh, assessment tool just to see how burned out you are. Now, if this could be if if this could be validated, scientifically validated, because again, I just cooked this up literally this morning, and I'm going to show you how. Um, but if this could be scientifically validated to be medically useful or psychologically useful or clinically useful, that'd be great. And if you want to do that, reach out. Let me know. Um, okay, so. Um, I, the rest of the repo is just kind of basic explanation as to what's there, but those are the categories. So let's go through how I actually did all this. So it all just started with this conversation with Claude. I'd like your help to come up with a standard burnout inventory, um, so on and so forth. So I talked about like getting objective measures and so on and so forth. Now, at first it, it started recommending stuff like cortisol levels. I'm like, no, we need to, we need to not do, we need to not do anything uh, medically intervention. I said, uh, you know, uh, sliding scale is fine. Um, but we need to do, um, but we need to make it so that we can, uh, kind of have a set of categories that can be self-reported. That's what I'm trying to say. So you can see here where the second message, it came up with these categories based on the, my feedback, sleep, work, physical health, mental health, energy fatigue, so on and so forth. You get the idea. Um, so then we go back and forth a little bit, ask a couple questions, um, and then we start generating the questions. Um, so that's when I got the idea of like, let's do set A versus set B. So we'll have two sets of questions, one with positive framing and another with negative framing. Um, there's reasons for this. And, and Claude actually did a, did a good job of explaining why um, having, having uh, kind of A-B testing is, is good. Um, basically, when you, when you pose similar or same question in a positive light versus a negative light, that overcomes uh, bias. So then we go through and many, many messages later, we get 240 whole questions. And then I try and get it to write the code. And I was pretty dumb at first. I was just having it write the HTML code flat out, which I was like, okay, that's really not going to work because then we have a, like, there's a better way of doing this. Um, so what I did then was I came over here and I said, okay, let's just do the questions in a CSV. Um, cause then it's easy to like, let's say for instance, if a clinical psychologist, you know, works with me to, uh, clean up these questions and to validate them or whatever, um, then we can just update the file here and it'll be version controlled. And then what we did, and this was the hard part was actually getting a Python script that will generate the HTML file. Um, so that way you just update the questions and then you run the script and it generates the file. This took a while. Um, and I'm, I'm going to show you everything that we went through to get this. Um, cause getting, getting the, um, the logic correct was difficult and everything else. So 3.5, we went back and forth, yada, yada, yada. It didn't really work that well. Um, so then I came over here to just GPT 4.0 and we went back and forth for a while. I gave it the files. I said, here's what I'm working on. Let's see if we can figure it out. It didn't really work. Um, so it, it kind of kept coming up with stuff. I, I said, let's add a debug function so I don't have to keep manually typing it in. Uh, lots and lots of problems later. Uh, I came over here and tried GPT-40 with Canvas, which was really convenient because then it's like, oh, let's just keep updating this thing. But it kept coming up with the same problems. Like um, it kept splitting the values and there's all kinds of really bu like weird bugs you can see in this. And if you want to look at all the bugs, like just to, for the sake of time, um, you come over here and just look at um, the last commit because um, I got it all working here. Um, doop, 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 sorry, all working. So let's go to browse repository at this point. So you can see all the different versions that weren't working. So I, I wanted to keep what wasn't working so that you can see kind of what it was doing wrong. Um, and version five is the one that, that actually finally worked. Um, so all that's there. And so uh, Claude couldn't figure it out. 4.0 couldn't figure it out. 4.0 with Canvas couldn't figure it out. 
I took it over to um, O1 Preview, and it did it the first try. So this is this is really cool. So again, like I said, I know that I said I'm getting out of AI. I am getting out of AI, but this is too cool not to document. The whole purpose here, though, is is burnout. So what I did was I said I have a problem with a Python script below, yada, yada, yada. So I gave it the script, and then I also gave it the data just so that it knows. Um, and I, did, I think I also gave it the, did I also give it the readme file? I don't think I gave it the readme file. But anyways, I explained what it was, what it was, what was, what it was getting wrong. Thought for 73 seconds. This was impressive to watch. Um, so, you know, one of the, the script was pinning it wrong. It was calculating things wrong. And when you look at the difference between some of these scripts, um, these like uh, generate widget, you know, and then generate widget two, three, four. You can see fundamentally it, the the entire approach changes from f when we got to version five, and so it just said like, okay, cool, let's try this out: mapping raw scores, mapping out scoring, calculating scores, assessing uniform answers, factoring raw score, testing. So it went through a lot of internal steps. Um, it looks like it actually ran the code internally quite a few times to test itself. Um, so then it made sure that it was consistent, and then it finally spit out a brand new script that actually worked first time generating this file. So that was really, really cool. Um, there's a lot of lessons to be gained from this. Um, you know, basically, I probably could have saved myself some time if I thought through just a little bit more and started with, you know, like, let's just start with a list of questions. Oops. Let's go back to here, code. Um, so yeah, like if I just started with a list of questions and figured out exactly kind of what I was asking it to do. Um, one Another thing that was really aggravating is that 4.0 Canvas, it kept just trying to write a Python script that would just, that assumed that there was a, a list of answers somewhere. And I'm like, no, we're writing a form, we're writing a survey. So in some respects, GPT-4.0 Canvas is actually dumber. Um, and even, and so I had to go back and be very, very explicit and say like, stop, just, stop just making assumptions and, and being lazy. Um, and speaking of laziness, I will say that Claude is by far the laziest coder, uh, that I have tried. Um, so I know that I dump on open AI a lot, but open AI is definitely better at coding. At least it'll write the whole script. Whereas, uh, Claude, it'll keep trying to cut it off. And I said, stop being lazy. Anyways, I'm kind of repeating myself now. I think you get the idea. So I TLDR, I used AI to generate a burnout recovery index. It's 240 questions. If someone wants to improve this, uh, just ping me. Um, also, I know that I said that I deleted my Twitter account, but I might reactivate Twitter because some of the research that I'm doing would lend myself to that. But anyways, also last thing before we go, you probably noticed that the comments are disabled and that's, I'm just gonna leave the comments disabled forever because the level of toxicity in the AI space is going up and I don't want to deal with it anymore. So if you want content, the, the deal is no more comments, just upvote or downvote and leave. So, all right, bye.